Hello and welcome back to the Ice Bath. I'm Matt. I'm Griff. And uh, it was definitely a, another good week of football, I'd say. What do you think? Yeah, the um, for the most part, I mean, I, I didn't get to watch most of the Saturday games, but uh, no, obviously no. we had the Vikings come back. We had the, uh, the, the Dolphins and Bills game was very good. I didn't see any of the Ravens-Browns game, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because <laughs> it seemed like a very anticlimactic game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean... Sun and then going into Sunday, the uh, the one o'clock game Sunday were actually really good. Um, I I was at the bar watching them all, and every single game was like one possession game in like the last two minutes of the game. So it yeah, was, it was um, interesting. And and having Saturday games, I know you're not a fan of them. Yeah, well, not a fan, but you know what? Um, when when they end up being good games like that, it's yeah, it's entertaining. Like the Colts Vikings game, huh? How about that Vikings comeback? The Vikings comeback was ridiculous. Yeah. Imagine being down like thirty three. It was thirty three nothing at half, and you know, first off, I still don't think the Vikings are a very good team, but yeah, they do deserve a ton of credit for that because you could have easily thrown in the towel there. No, I mean it shows perseverance. I mean you're professional football players, and you you have a job to do, and you go out and you set a goal to win the game. Yeah, 100%. and you're down thirty three zero. I mean that goal's still on the table. Um, I, you still got to do everything you can, and. and it was just impressive what he did in the, the I, would fourth have quarter. To, I, I don't know what they said at halftime. Um, was it the, Kevin O'Connell's their coach, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what he told them at halftime, but out comes Kirk Cousins. Um, he must have, you know, being in the Dome, I think he was a little confused. I think he probably thought it was a primetime game. Mm-hmm. Um, so he came out really slow, and then uh, Kevin O'Connell talks to him at halftime. He's like, yo, it's it's 1 o'clock right now. Um, you, you might want to. Might want to go throw some touchdowns. You got Justin Jefferson. Well, they put up twenty two in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like uh, that's just yeah, that's that's crazy. That's... And and but Kirk Cousins drops four hundred sixty yards, four touchdowns against a very solid pass defense. Yeah, I mean Justin Jefferson, another big game, twelve one twenty three and one. And how about KJ Osborne? KJ Osborne had a huge game, ten one fifty seven and one. Um, you know, I think at this point though, Justin Jefferson has got to be the uh, consensus number one overall pick for fantasy next year. You think uh, so? Yeah. Not McCaffrey? McCaffrey not yeah, offense? Yeah, you, you could argue McCaffrey, too. And just, I just think Jefferson's just so consistent and, like, yeah. knock on wood. We don't have any wood around here, but knock on wood, like, he stays healthy. That's true. That's true. And that, that's one of the reasons I liked him so much going into this year was he was young. He doesn't have, like, an injury history. No, he's very that's, durable. That's what scared me. Uh, well, and that's also why I like Jonathan Taylor, though. But then Jonathan Taylor goes out and has an injury-ridden season, and all year he was banged up. Yeah, I, I kind of write this season off for him. Now he's he's done for the year with that ankle yeah. injury. Um, but J- Justin Jefferson, man, he uh, like you said, just consistent, so consistent. Like he he's gonna break that that record for um yards in a season. Yards in yeah. a season. Well, which I mean is easier to do now with the extra game. Yeah, but you know what? what but you still got to do it. What if he does it in seventeen or in in sixteen? It's possible. I he, mean, he the could. numbers he's been putting up. I mean, uh, he's what three something away right now. He had sixteen targets against the Colts. You, like six, that's absurd. That's how you have to run that offense, though. That that offense has to run through Je- uh, Justin Jefferson. Well, you have Justin Jefferson, and you have Dalvin Cook, and T.J. Hawkinson. Like you have weapons all and over the Thielen's field. Thielen's no slouch. No, no. Thielen's a great number two. Yeah, especially in the red zone. Yeah, you have him and Hawkinson, who's covered yeah. both of them. Yeah, nobody. That's but, uh, it, it's a scary offense. Their defense just hasn't been good. No. They allowed 33 points in the first half to Matt Ryan. Right. Uh, granted, I think uh, they had a special teams touchdown they and did. a defensive touchdown there. So, they but, did. but still, I mean, you're facing the Colts, who, let's be honest, they they're way below expectations this year. Yep. And they they didn't have to face Jonathan Taylor. He he had one catch and goes out with an ankle injury. Yeah. You're which... facing Zach Moss, who couldn't even make the make the Bills. Deion Jackson, who's Every time he steps on the field, he uh, yeah. he, he performs. But yeah, I mean, he, he's averaged four yards a carry to Moss's three and a half. Yeah. So Deion Jackson definitely the preferred back there for me, even though he had. I completely half agree. The I don't know Moss. if he'll. I don't know if he'll uh, out carry Moss though. No, no. Um, which I think is a a sham. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going into my into my championship. You gotta go with the more productive my, back in, in one opinion. of my leagues, and I've yeah, I've got a. Uh, I've got Deion Jackson there to fill in for Taylor, and I'm, I'm like, I might have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Deion Jackson seems to be their change-up guy, um, which is unfortunate because we've seen he can handle the full workload. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, he had a game this year um, 
when Taylor went down with an injury, because that's been the story of the season. Yeah. Uh, Deion Jackson had a game where he had an insane game. He had like what twenty eight in fantasy or something. Twenty four. Yeah, he had twelve carries, forty two yards, and a touchdown, and ten catches for seventy nine yards. Yeah, ten catches. Yeah, uh, for a running back. Yeah, like, that's that's, that's hard. Austin Eckler numbers. Yeah, that's hard to do as a receiver. Yeah. Um, but I mean, injuries have been the storyline of the season for a lot of stars, and the Eagles fall victim to that recently. Um, uh, it sucks. News broke out yesterday that Jalen Hurts sustained a shoulder injury during the Bears game. He did play through it, um, and it is, you know, not considered to be a long-term injury that, you know, I don't know. I think this could affect him going forward. Honestly. You think so? I, I think because we've seen we've seen how shoulders can really, really F up yeah, a, a quarterback. But at the same time, you guys are 13-1. and one. He doesn't have to play the rest of the season. Like, he could sit right. out. Well, and, and that's, I, I prefer if, if we, we send the rest of the season because then you have three weeks where he gets rested. And You're probably going to get a first round bye. Yeah. So that's a month that he gets to rest, heal up that shoulder, and then come in healthy, fresh legs yeah, for no, the playoffs. I, I 100% And agree. Gardner Minshew is more than serviceable for backup. He could be a starter on a lot of teams right now. He could be a starter on the Jets right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, we were just looking at Minshew's stats. He's got like 41 touchdowns to 12 interceptions in his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why he lost his job was because they brought in a new coaching regime and they landed the number one pick. And, and they Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence. Who... May I say, is him? Oh yeah, he is. I mean, another day, another, another. T Law masterclass. Yeah, as you say. Yeah, and it's a, it's against the tough Cowboys defense. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been a tough defense for years, and this year's no exception. He's able to lead the comeback, get them to overtime, where Dak choked through that pick six. Well, they haven't been a, a great defense until they got Dan Quinn. Once they got Dan Quinn, yeah. that defense is really stuck. Yeah, up. that's true. Um, in the last six games, Trevor Lawrence has almost 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns, and just one interception. The Jags are 4-2 and two in those games, and now they control their own destiny. If they win out, they win the division. That's crazy. It's unbelievable. Well, didn't, and, they, didn't they start, like, like really bad? Yeah. What was the record the first, uh, like, seven weeks? Wasn't it, like, 1-6 and six or something? It might have been. It was, like, something really yeah, bad, they, I'm pretty they were, sure. They were really bad to start. And, or, or am I thinking the Lions? You know, One I, of those teams start well, off really the, bad. Well, the Lions, too, yeah. yeah. The, the Lions are 7-1 and one in their last eight. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it was the Lions. I'm thinking of that yeah, one and were. six, but um, but still, I the yeah. the Jags are kind of in that same position too, and I I want to jump on this bandwagon now. I mean, this team's so exciting to watch, in my opinion. Well, Watching Trevor Lawrence these last couple games, I I'm not gonna lie, I didn't watch much of the Jags until last week, or well, the last two weeks. Um, I, I don't think I really had a reason to watch the Jags, but they're, now they were two and six to start yeah, the season. I'm sorry. Okay, and and watching Trevor Lawrence make these throws. He's making some big boy throws. He steps yeah. up in the pocket, and his arm is just unbelievable. He fits the ball into these in, into these tight windows that I, I haven't seen many guys been able to do before. And I'm, well, we we talked about this a little bit on the the podcast last week um, about how we you know next year they're a playoff team. Yeah, hell, they're a playoff team this year. They could be. They and, they and could be. They don't even have their best playmaker. No, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. Right. Again, we we talked about this last week, and I, I was saying how I, I really like this team. I really like where they're going. You have a star in Trevor Lawrence. Doug Peterson's turning this team around. Yep. Um, and you got to view this as Trevor Lawrence's rookie season because you, 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 last year was a wash with Urban Meyer. Um, but if this is Trevor Lawrence's rookie season, you know, it, theoretically, he's having a, a great rookie season. And so is Travis Etienne. And so is Travis Etienne. You know, Travis Etienne has had some up and down games. Um, this week he looked good again. He still has the fumbling issue, and I, I think that team still needs like a bigger, uh, a bigger back that can take more of the workload. I was just about to say that. I, I don't think Travis Etienne is a workhorse type no, back. I you do. need somebody else in there to split, split the. Travis back Etienne is a very very good change of pace back. But mm-hmm. he's not a guy that should be a three down back. No, he should be your third down back. He should. It, be in a role like Antonio Gibson, maybe a more a more mm-hmm. advanced Antonio Gibson role, and you've got to get the ball in his hands in different ways, maybe line him up outside, give him some jet sweeps and stuff like that. Right. But I do think you need a bigger body running back to come in and just run, run down the defense's throat because your run game right now is kind of non-existent. You've got Lawrence, he's dropping back. He's averaging, I think, over, I don't know, it's... You know who would be a perfect for, for for them? Who's a free agent next year? Who? Jamal Williams. Oh. Imagine Jamal Williams, Travis Etienne in that backfield. Ooh. 
Yeah. Give me that all day long. Yeah. You know who I actually like too? Um, I believe he's a free agent after this season is Samaj P. Ryan. P. Ryan. Okay. I think P. Ryan is too similar to, to ETN though in their play, their, their game. They're both. Their play style. They're both receiving backs. Uh, but P. Ryan has shown the running ability before. That's the thing. He has. He has. P. Ryan's going to get a good gig somewhere um, like Atlanta, I think. Oh, yeah. Where, where he's going to be part of a committee. And he's going to have to fight with Algier and probably Patterson to duke it out for that starting gig. But um, I, I think that, that he'll thrive in a, a situation like that in a Who's committee. His, uh, oh, Kareem Hunt? Yeah, so free agent running backs next year are, uh, you got Saquon Barkley, Kareem Hunt, Rashad Penny, Jamal Williams, Josh Jacobs. Uh, some pretty big names there. Deontay Foreman having a good year. Deontay Foreman's having a good year. You got Miles Sander, Sanders. McKinnon, who's looked solid with the Chiefs. <laughs> Don't even get me started with McKinnon, man. I, um, I was facing him in the playoffs this week, and I'm, I'm watching the Chiefs game, and I'm like, dude, stop stop throwing the ball to him. Stop throwing the ball yeah. to him. You put up like 35 fantasy points. But then you got guys like David Montgomery. You got Devin Singletary. You have Alexander Madison, who I could how, see starting somewhere. How is Dima already a free agent? I, I, I feel like he just came into the league. That's, that's crazy. 2019, yeah. Wow. Yeah, totally Barkley, Barkley is only on here because he uh, he got franchise tagged. Oh, yeah. Or, I'm sorry, no, they picked up his fifth-year option. Fifth year option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can get franchise tagged this year, which is probably what the Giants are going to do. Um, I yeah, after well, this Unless season, they use it on Daniel Jones. That's true. I don't know. Um, but I saw uh, Pollard's on there, too. He's, he's Tony getting, Pollard, yeah. Tony, Tony he'll, Pollard's He'll have a big market, yeah. yeah. Huge market, probably. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you got to... Rico Dowdle. I don't know. Ask Dallas. <laughs> um, it's on Dallas. Yeah, apparently, oh. according to Sport Rec. Oh, but okay. um, crazy, crazy um, running back free agency class. It'll be really interesting to see where you know how this this plays out. You looking him up on a uh, sleeper? Yeah, I've never seen this guy before. He has seven. He has seven carries for twenty four yards in his career. Really? Yeah. You know, twenty twenty, he got seven carries. Um, Where's he out of South Carolina? Yeah, he went to South Carolina. Huh. Nice. Interesting. But, I mean, between Barkley, Josh Jacobs, you got Tony Pollard, Miles Sanders putting together a good year. Like, there's a lot of good running backs out there. Um, Josh Jacobs? I, I said uh, Jacobs and yeah, Barkley, I, yeah. Like, Jacobs, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen there. Do you think the you think the Raiders go out and re-sign him? Or, like, I, I think you have to if you're the Raiders, right? Yeah. You have to throw him the bag. Yeah, I mean, especially since the offense is running through him right now. 100%. I mean, last year was his first season under 1,000 yards, and it was because they were kind of going by committee with him and Kenyon Drake. Yeah. Um, And he's shown that he could be a threat out of the backfield in the receiving game now. Right. He's a two-dimensional back now. Yeah. Yeah, no, he um, he's definitely – become a, a offensive weapon quite the offensive re- weapon and a threat to a lot of defenses speaking of vegas how about that win they just pulled off patriots what, what happened, happened? Uh, how do you lose the vegas raiders <laughs> i i don't understand what was going through jacoby myers head yeah um You'd think for a team that's so disciplined, under a coach that's you know yeah. likes to discipline preaches team, discipline, yeah, um, you know, and Bill Belichick, that you have a play like that to end the game and lose the game. Well, you know what uh, they were they're asking Stevenson about it after the game, and he uh, he said it was just a straight up draw play. He wasn't supposed to pitch that. Yeah, no, I did see that. He he just off of win, so not only through uh, the game, which I don't. I'm okay with Stevenson pitching it there mm-hmm. because maybe maybe somebody breaks out in space. I, I mean, we saw the Miami Miracle before. Right. Um, but why is Jacoby Myers throwing that, like, on the run, like, on yep. the move, like, off his back foot? And then Mac Jones, can we just talk about that stiff arm? <laughs> he got stiff arm to another dimension, dude. <laughs> that was that's crazy. That was unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that was a Chandler, Chandler Jones did his best uh, Derek Henry impression impression there. He he did, and uh, Derek Carr was mic'd up on the sidelines. Oh, what he, he said? He was just like so confused at first. He's like, well, like, <laughs> what are they doing? Like, what, 
you, you could see it in his face. Like they, they, they put the camera on him. He's just like he's sitting there, like he's like really confused, and he's just freaking out. He's like, "We just won!" I, I just don't understand. I, I, I don't know. I, I was sitting there watching that game, and I, I couldn't help but just burst out laughing at that. Yeah, because no, I, I mean, obviously, I don't like the Patriots, so for me to watch that unfold, it was great. But even as a football fan, I was just confused. Yeah, I mean, especially since they didn't draw it up like that, and Myers goes and just off on a whim does that. And, I mean, kudos to Chandler Jones. Yeah. Talk about football IQ. Uh, Derek, awareness. Carr, Derek Carr was actually, uh, right, I think it was Carr, he was saying that he was hoping Chandler Jones was going to pitch it. He's like, I, I don't know what his 40 time is like, but I was I was begging he was <laughs> going to pitch that ball. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. I mean, and... Chandler Jones, what what a what a play to have against the team that drafted you too. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that was definitely um a, a fun game, fun ending to the game. So you don't see stuff like that happen. No, you don't. Week. And yeah, this was it was a great week overall. I mean, it's like the uh, the Colts, the time they lined up in that odd formation on special teams. Do you remember that? A couple of, that was or, years and years. Or ago. like when uh, was it Jimmy G this year that stepped through the back of the end zone? Oh, and did his best uh, Orlovsky. Did Orlovsky impression. Yeah. We've, we've had some pretty good moments. Yeah, it's been a memorable year. So And let's uh, let's keep going. Week 16. Let's, yeah. We got so, Christmas week. Yeah. Uh, Merry so Christmas the, to everyone the, that celebrates. Yeah, those of you celebrating. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, we, I love the Christmas time. We'll love be back time right after Christmas, so it'll be... Uh, Grind don't stop. Yeah. But um, going into the Christmas week, we got Thursday night game. The Jags against my Jets... I gotta go Jacksonville after the game they just had against Dallas. Yeah, I'm going Jacksonville too. Um, Zach Wilson is probably still the quarterback this week because Mike White has a bunch of fractures in his ribs, and That's scary. he's probably not going to be uh, be able to get cleared. Um, Nor should he. I mean, nah, no, he shouldn't. For uh, player safety sake, I mean, Zach Wilson looked terrible. I mean, on paper, his stats. What you you, you might be like you kind of you sound yeah. crazy. He had over 300 yards, threw a couple touchdowns. He looked terrible. He only had one ter- uh, interception, though. I mean, he only had one interception. He should have had at least three. Yeah, there. Uh, he that's th- true. He threw up. <laughs> he threw up like three separate prayers that I don't know how Jets made receptions on them. There was one to Michael Carter at the end of the game. He just threw one up, and it's just up, up, up. Michael Carter just goes up over two defenders. Um, Zach Wilson looked terrible. He has no confidence, which uh, we were talking about that before. I don't, I mean, he doesn't have a reason to have any confidence. He got benched and got put for, it. For uh, Mike White. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know you're a big Mike White fan, but Mike White is going to be one of these guys is going to be a career backup. He's going to come in. He's going to have a couple good games, you know, if he fills in for injury or yeah. somebody else sucking, but you know, I agree. Um, he, he's a career backup. And, and when you're the number two overall pick and you're getting benched for a backup, and you in become your second the third year, string. And you become the third string on Joe Flacco. Yeah. The flack up. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This team's in shambles. Started off really well. I thought this was going to be a great season. And then my hopes and dreams were just ripped apart. Jacksonville here. I want them to win out. I want them to win that division. I want to see T-Law in the playoffs. Um, so as a Jet fan, it, it sucks. But I also have come to the realization that we're not going to the playoffs this year. So I might as well root for Trevor Lawrence right now. Yeah. Um, Give me I mean, the Jags by you, a score. You guys you guys have a shot to make the playoffs. I mean. The problem is we lost both games to the Pats. Well, you're, you're hoping that Zach Wilson comes in and strings together a nice game against Jacksonville. I'm hoping he doesn't. <laughs> and then, I'm praying on his downfall. I just I don't like Zach Wilson. We need a change. I, just, I don't like how he handles himself in interviews. I agree. Um. Uh, but I think that's something that comes with age. I He's mean, a young quarterback. I still think he has a high ceiling. He does. But uh, I don't think it's with the Jets. He's 23 years old. Yeah, I just don't think it's I with mean, the Jets. And, and you're, how do you handle yourself in front of the media at 23 years old? And especially when they're setting you up for failure with some of the questions. No, right, right, 100%. I saw a question that one of them asked. Um, I forget exactly what the question was, but he, he did handle it a lot better this week than he did a couple weeks ago. He, he took more accountability this week. I did see something about him saying he's got to be better, got to play better. Yeah, yeah. Like, he 
I don't know. But I, it's one thing you could go in and say. I don't say, hate the guy. You and, go, I, I don't hate the guy. And you spent you, you spent a second round pick, or I'm sorry, not a second round pick, the number two overall pick on him, yeah. second pick in the overall in the draft on him. You, you got to be somewhat loyal to him, and you you gave him a defensive head, you know, defensive minded head coach to mold this guy. The problem is, like in today's NFL, you you keep taking quarterbacks until you have your guy. You're not worried about make, making guys fit. I mean, you look you look at the uh, the Cardinals a couple years ago. Take Josh Rosen in the first one. Actually, we didn't even bring that up. Josh Rosen got signed to the Vikings did, practice yeah. squad. Shout out Josh Rosen. Um, um, I wanted him so bad when we uh, when we took Darnold. That that was probably my biggest miss ever. Was liking Josh Rosen. Uh, oh, in me that too. Draft me in too. 2018. He was my favorite quarterback in the draft. I just thought he was the most pro ready. I couldn't have been yeah far you know farther off. But yeah. I also my favorite quarterback in that draft was Josh Allen. Speaking of Allen, we got the Bills at uh, we got the Bills at Bears. You gotta go Buffalo. I mean, yeah, Bears just yeah. they're. They just lose games. That's what they, they do. Yeah. And Buffalo uh, looks good. They do look good. I'm going to go with Buffalo as well. I think, I think uh, Diggs has a bounce back game. He was a little quiet against Miami. Yep. New Orleans at Cleveland. <laughs> this game's really bad. Yeah. Um, I got to go Cleveland. Me too. Just because uh, this is more so biased. I want to see New Orleans tank just so Eagles can have a top five <laughs> pick. Yeah. So I'm kind of manifesting yeah, that by taking I'm, Cleveland. I'm rocking Cleveland as well. Plus, I just think Cleveland's the better team. I do too. I think Nick Chubb takes over. Yeah. Um, who, who would you rather have a quarterback right now, Deshaun Watson or Andy Andy Dalton? Uh, taking away character and just going off performance? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm performance base, ignore off the field issues, ignore contracts. Just Deshaun who, Watson. Deshaun Watson? Yes. Really? I don't. Watson has not looked that great. He hasn't. Neither has Andy Dalton. Right, that's my point. Andy Dalton is, you know, barely uh, getting I, that. I'd rather game. have Deshaun Watson because he's got the mobility too. That's true. That's true. Um, I don't know. Just, I think he's still trying to get used to the Cleveland offense. You know, I don't. I, I, I don't want to make excuses. At the same level right now. I don't want to make excuses for the guy because I I cannot stand him. Uh, yeah, but I uh, can't either. but. Yeah, you're getting used to this offense. You're coming into this with you got the media all around you. You're under a lot of pressure to perform. Yeah. Um, and I I think he'll he'll ease into it. You've but got a good team around you. You're you're getting paid over two hundred million dollars yeah. guaranteed, all guaranteed. Yeah. You have to perform. I don't I don't care. You do like, have to perform. They're, they're, you can't have excuses you've, for a guy. You've got that, you've got offensive weapons around you to where you should be performing. You have you've Amari got a stronger Cooper, line. It's one of the best offensive lines in the league. You have Amari Cooper, Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Donovan Peoples Jones is solid. David and Joku's David and Joku's having, a, pretty solid having year. a career year. Yeah. So you've got the guys around I'm you. I'm a big Harrison Bryant fan. I think that he could start uh for a couple teams. I, I think I think he's an up and coming tight end. I I, I agree. Um. Next, we got Houston at Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Tennessee's I'm... not looked good. They haven't in Houston's last few weeks. <laughs> like 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 I said uh, last week, Houston is a scrappy one win team, and they, they are. showed it again. Yes. They took the Chiefs to OT. They did. Which what what a game! <laughs> it was a great game, and it's not even like Mahomes had a bad game. Oh my goodness! I hate ESPN. Um, it's not even like that. Mahomes had a bad game, like. I think uh, Mahomes had one of his better games of the season. He did. He was thirty six of forty one, three thirty six, and two touchdowns. When you when you and had a rushing touchdown. When you throw forty one passes, only five of them are incomplete. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, um, and uh, I, credit to the the Texans' offense because they played very well. And it's back to back weeks where they're taking good teams the distance. Yeah. The Cowboys won it on their last drive two weeks ago against them. And uh, this past game, they take the Chiefs to overtime. Davis Mills, sure, he didn't have the best game passing. 12, uh, 12 of 24, two touchdowns. No no interceptions. Also had the rushing touchdown. Um, I, but I raise you this point. Davis Mills, he had a 50% you know, percent, uh, completion percentage, yes. But he did throw for two touchdowns. Yeah. So he, he, he was scoring... On offense. Yeah. Not to mention, these were his top three receivers. 
Chris Moore. <laughs> Have you heard of him? No. Amari Rogers, who was cut earlier in the year. He, because he had he, more fumbles than catches. Because he had more fumbles than catches by the Packers. And Jordan Ak- Akins. Who's a tight end. Who's a tight end. He threw a touchdown to Tegan Quatoriano. Never heard of him. And I'm I'm pretty knowledgeable about players in the NFL. Let me tell you, when I saw that name pop up, I had no idea who he was. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, where, was this, uh, where was this game being streamed? Was it on... I think it was a CBS game. CBS? They were probably, you know, uh, pooping their pants, <laughs> scared, because they, Who is this guy? they did not have a graphic. Uh, they is, wanted to spell his name correctly on the graphic. He's a rookie. Um, don't know. He came from Oregon State. That's about all I know. I don't even know if Davis Mills knows who this guy is. No. Um, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, I feel bad for Davis Mills because Houston's going to end too. up with number one pick. They're going to draft the quarterback. He's going to be thrust into a backup role. And I think he could start on some teams. They took this guy in the fifth round this year? Really? Yeah. Wow. I think I would have heard of him. I, I yeah, knew same. the draft class pretty well this year. Never heard, I honestly say, I've never heard of Tegan Quatoriano. Um, but yeah. my, my point is, Davis Mills has done enough to, to earn, in my opinion, earn himself a starting job. Well, he's got nothing around him. The old line's not good outside of Laramie Tunsil. But but he's he put up 24 points against the Chiefs with with nothing. You have no, no Brandon I, Cooks, no I Nico Collins. I agree. I love Davis No Mills. Damian Pierce. Well, yeah, I'm just, I, I think... Oh, I'm sorry. He had three touchdowns because he had one rushing. Yeah, he did, and it was on a crazy bootleg. It was uh like 16, 17 yards, something like that. He's a smart guy too. What did he go to Stanford? Uh, yeah, he was a Stanford guy. Like, I don't know. Houston obviously is going to go quarterback first overall pick. You have to. But the fact that of the matter is Davis Mills. Well, is, maybe you don't have to. Is a starting caliber quarterback that has been producing with nothing around him. Yeah, it'll be interesting when we when we do another mock draft. Um, I don't know if I'll have the Texans going with a quarterback at one. I think they're, they're going to go quarterback at one. I don't know if they will. I the the thing is, Bryce Young is very undersized. Not even his height, yeah. his weight. He's just not built. Mm-hmm. And I, there's still questions about C.J. Stroud. And if you're in that position and you don't love any of the quarterbacks. Why would you waste a pick when you could fill in some bigger needs? You could go out and get Will Anderson off the edge and then wait till next year. You're probably going to suck again because this team is still a, a couple of years away. I they think are. They you are. could wait and get Caleb Williams next year. The, the thing is that the NFL is all about now results. It is. No, and I agree. They're, they're going to get rid of Lovey Smith. They're going to bring in a new coach. I hope it's Josh McCowan. <laughs> I really do. I, I think he's a great football mind. And I think if McCowan comes in and could pick his quarterback. But that's I, the thing is whoever comes in as head coach isn't going to stick with Davis Mills because he's going to be a new regime. And Davis Mills. Or either, maybe whoever comes in likes Davis Mills. Maybe, maybe one of us gets the job. Yeah, maybe. Well, if I'm in, well, you know. The, the opening's probably going to be posted on LinkedIn, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I still got to go Tennessee. That's, yeah, that's enough talk about the Texans. I'm going Tennessee. We went way off track there. Yeah. Um, Seattle at Kansas City. Yeah, KC. KC. Uh, Seattle's without Tyler Lockett. They've really come down to earth. Uh, yep. The past couple of weeks. So. Yeah, KC. Giants at Minnesota. We're, we differ here. Um, I've I've got the Giants. I'm gonna keep fading Minnesota, and I don't know why I keep doing it because they still keep winning games by a score, but I just don't think they're a great team. Great offense. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very good offense. Probably a top five offense in the league. I just don't think that the Giants have anybody that's going to be able to cover Justin Jefferson. Not Between that do. and the Giants have one of the worst run defenses in the league. Dalvin Cook's going to run all over them, and Justin Jefferson's just going to destroy them. Nobody's going to be able to keep up with them. Yeah, I could, no, I, I see it. I, I so just, I, just, I, like I, I don't think the Giants' defense is going to be up to snuff to contain Minnesota. Fair enough. Uh, Cincy at New England... Um, I gotta, I gotta go, go Cincy. Yeah, I gotta go Cincy as well. Uh, especially the way New England just lost that last game. <laughs> yeah, you you know they're gonna come in and it's gonna be a good game. They're gonna be super disciplined. They're gonna do everything to a T because you know Bill Belichick is making them run, run, yeah. run right now. Yeah. Um, you know that he's making them do 
the same play over and over again, like a Quentin Tarantino film, or I'm sorry, not Quentin Tarantino, Stanley Kubrick film. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick film where you, you have to do 160 takes to, to get it right. That's Bill Belichick right now. Well, you also, since he came out slow against Tampa Bay too, um, big second half from Burrow ended up dropping for a touchdown. Shout out to Joe Burr. Um, <laughs> but they can't come out slow like every game. And I, I no. feel like they do come out slow every game. Well, they just don't have the offensive firepower. I see. I, I disagree. I think they do. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. Oh no, I'm talking about New England. Oh, oh no, I was talking sorry. about. Cincy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was totally oh, off there. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Cincy. Cincy, they've been coming out slow to start games. Yeah, especially as of late. But so is New England. Yeah, Cincy's problem right now is they're unable to get the run going. That's true. That's true. But I think it comes down to their offensive line once again. Yeah, no, it's the, the same issue the as last year. The O-line looked really bad against Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Burrow took a an 18-yard sack on third down, got bailed out from a defensive hold on it, but it was hilarious. He just started sprinting backwards. Yeah. I thought he was going to run all the way to the other end zone. Zero protection. Yeah, no, it's it's bad. And that's, it's, that's it's like, super important. They're this insta-shedding those blocks. Yeah. yeah. Which you thought, like, you know, you, you had all those. Didn't they get Alex Kappa? You and got Alex Kappa and you Lyle got um, Collins. Yeah, Lael Collins. In the offseason. Like, those should be two big additions to your offensive line, and they, we have not seen any improvement. Uh, we got Detroit at Carolina. <laughs> got to rock with Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Detroit, if they went out, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. And they're on fire lately. They, they're just clicking on all, all cylinders. That offense looks really good. Um, yeah, defense looks solid, too. They do. Um, Aiden Hutchinson is... The defense really is so much bill. better than it was in the first quarter of the season. It is. We were talking about how this could be the worst defense of all time. But I'm pretty sure I did say that they would get their stuff together. Because usually, when when a defense starts out really, really bad, they make a change halfway through the season, and it's like flipping a switch. And that's kind of what Detroit did. Yeah, they. I still think they need secondary help, though. Um I think they only have one corner under contract going into the next season, and that's Jeff Okuda. But, yeah, they're looking better than they were. Um, Got to go with Detroit. Got to go with Man Campbell. I, I think uh, Amani Oruwarie is expiring, and he's taken a step back this year. Um, he has. He has not looked as good. No, he hasn't. Yeah, they're I, losing uh, Amani Oruwarie. Uh, they're losing Deshaun Elliott, Will Harris, and Mike Hughes. Yeah. So, um, they'll re-sign a couple of those guys, I'm sure, but that's that's a big hit to your secondary. Yeah, I think that's... But it gives you a chance to rebuild a little bit. It's a, I think it's a position they address in the draft and move forward. Um, but yeah, Detroit right now, right in the high, got to rock with them. Right. Atlanta, Baltimore. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Desmond Ritter? Um, no thoughts, just bad football. Yeah. All right, I'll, was, I'll take it. Uh, I'm going Baltimore. <laughs> me too. I think Lamar's back. Oh, really? Uh, even if Lamar's not back, I, I, uh, Atlanta's just not. I think he is back, too. Not it. I mean, yeah. no, I don't know, no, no Kyle Pitts, who is arguably your best offensive weapon. Although Tyler Algier did have a monster game. He did carry Atlanta literally on his back. Yeah, no, Algier, Algier looked good. Uh, Patterson scored. Um, What did Algier do, actually? Algier had 139 yeah. yards oh in touchdown. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, off 17 carries. Dude is averaging 8 yards a carry. I didn't even realize that. Damn. And he only got 49% of the snaps on offense. That's a huge game. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to come into his own a little bit. I think this is a breakout game for him. Yeah. Um. Damn. But. Shout out Tyler Algier. Stud. I liked him out of BYU. Yeah, I'm still going Baltimore. Yeah, Oh, 100%. Yeah, Baltimore's just a better team. Washington at San Fran. This is a big game for Washington. If you lose this year, you cost yourself a playoff spot. Yeah. Um, but I still think San Fran's a better team. Yeah, I'm still rocking San Fran. How can you not? I mean, yeah. San Francisco, they just – Brock Purdy is – Technically 3-0 now. Yeah, he's he's good. He came in. He played most of the game against I w- uh, Miami. I, I'll admit that I was wrong about Brock Purdy. I was very wrong about him. Yeah. I thought he was. I thought he was going to get figured out. I thought teams were going to start cracking down on him, and he was going to look bad. He's but just, he just looks better and better. He's, he's making throws. Man, he's managing the game so well too. He is, but but, but yeah, he's making he the throws making the he throws needs throws to he make. Needs. Yep. 
completely agree. I'm going to go with San Fran by a score here. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a pretty good game. Next, we got Philly at Dallas. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm going to have to pick Dallas here because uh, of no Jalen Hurts. Even if Jalen Hurts plays, I think we lose this game. Really? And you know what? I'm, 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 I'm picking Dallas, but I, as a Philly fan, I want to lose this game, and I have good reasoning. So Dallas is probably going to end up as a five seed. We're going to end up as a one seed, right? Yeah. Dallas is probably going to end up playing, well, not end up probably. They're going to play the winner of the NFC South. So that's a cakewalk yeah. for them, which means we would probably have to play Dallas in the divisional round. It is hard to beat a team three times in the same season. You got a really good point. I so I would rather go into that game one and one. I'm than go in two and zero I, against Dallas because I completely agree with you. I just I, f- I feel like it's it's near impossible to beat a team three times in the same season. No, I I hundred percent agree with that. And they would have a chip on their shoulder going in that game. Yeah. If you get if they they, you know, get what they want here on Christmas Eve, and they can rub it in our faces all we want, all they want. When it comes down to that big game in the divisional round, when we yep. probably play them, I think we have more of an advantage if we lose this game than if we win. Okay. So that's my reasoning why I think it'd be a good thing for Philly to lose. Um, Saturday night, we got yeah. Vegas at Pitt. Uh, Vegas has looked pretty solid lately. They have. Uh, I. This is another team that if, if they went out, they, they have a shot at the playoffs too, don't they? They're in the hunt. Who, Vegas? They, yeah. yeah, they need everything to go right for them, but... Yeah. Um, man, I'm going to go with Vegas here. I got to go Vegas too, yeah. I do... Um, yeah, they kind of they almost threw that game away against New England, but I still think they're a better team. Mm-hmm. Got Green Bay at Miami, the first Christmas Day game of three. I'm going to go with Miami. I'm also going to go Miami. Um, Miami's coming off a loss. Miami coming off a loss. Green Bay coming off a, a win last night, but they're still they, they don't look good. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's the thing. They don't look great. Yeah. Y- y- and you have a good run game. But the passing game isn't really there. Yeah. Miami, I just Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. It's going to be hard to contain them. Yeah. Give me, uh, give me Miami. Yep, me too. We got the Rams, uh, home against Denver. <laughs> Brent Rippin, maybe. Denver's D is, is really good. It is. And the Rams aren't good. Neither is Denver, but neither team's good. Yeah, this is a bad game. It's a coin flip, but I got I got to go to the Rams. I'm going with Denver here. Um, I may change my pick. Give me one second. I just want to see something real quick. What are we checking? I am checking where the the, uh, rush the, the run defense is ranked for Denver. It's not bad. It's about middle of the pack. I was gonna say if uh, if it was, I th- I thought it was a lot worse than it is. I thought Cam, I think Cam Akers is gonna have a day. Really? I think he runs all over them. Yeah. Cam Akers, I mean he he had a, a decent stat line last night. Nothing too outstanding, but um, I don't know. He uh, he's all they really got, you know. So I yeah. think you got to rely on him to carry you, uh, you know, for the last couple wins through the season. But yeah, no, I'm going with Denver. Um, I just Denver doesn't really impress me. They're so lackluster in every yeah, aspect, ex- except for the defense. Can't say the Rams impress me either. So no, you're right, you're right. But I just think Baker Mayfield has this kind of spunk with him. He brings this, and I think he uh, he's a good fit for LA. Who Baker? Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Big stage. I agree. Has that big personality. Uh, it's gonna be interesting because I mean you got Stafford coming back. He just announced today he's probably not retiring. Mm. Um, even though he has a pretty serious neck injury, from my understanding. Is it? Uh, from my understanding, it, it could be really serious. Huh. I think they're still doing, still looking into that. But, um, I mean, Akers averaged 5.4 yards of carry last night against Green Bay. You know, Akers had a solid game. He had, what, 12 for 65? Yeah. Yeah. Three catches, Three catches, 35 yards. yards. Yeah. I mean, not you bad. got a score in there, and that's it's pretty pretty solid. But, um. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Rams. All right. And we got uh, Tampa, Arizona, uh, the nightcap on Christmas Day. And, again, another 
another bad game. Uh, yeah. Colt McCoy, it's just he looked terrible. Uh, he got hurt. Great, yeah. He got hurt, and Trace McSorley came in. Ooh, Trace McSorley. <laughs> Throwing on a dime. Um, I'm going to go with Tampa here. I'm also going Tampa, yeah. You know, Brady Brady looked really good. Actually, Tampa looked really good in the first half against uh, Cincy, and I thought they were going to run away with that game, and they choked it away. They did. They did. Um, it just, it, It's surprising because Tampa has all of the offensive weapons. It's just their offensive line's killing them. So Tampa, is their secondary. Tampa's 6-8, and eight and they're in first place. Well... Every other team in that division is a game out. Yeah. They're all, what, 5-9? and nine? Yeah. So, uh, that's going to be an interesting end. To that's the, anyone's division there. It really is. And then uh, Monday night, Boxing, Boxing Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way we both just said that. Yeah. I, I thought, I, I, thought, <laughs> I, have, no, I have no idea why. <laughs> what? <laughs> Chargers at Indianapolis. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with the Chargers here. No Jonathan Taylor for Indy. Um, in, yeah, that's that's all. Indy just it. blew a 33 nothing lead. Yeah, you, you can't be in the best mindset as Indy. Yeah. No, uh, Indy's confidence and morale is probably just shot, that locker room. Yeah. Uh, you, you've lost them for the season. Uh, Chargers are going to walk in, and they're going to scrape the floor with Indy. Yep, I agree. And, uh... We're, we thought it was going to be a short episode this week because we don't have any waiver wire watch or anything, but... We went off on a couple of tangents, though. Yeah, we, we did. So, um, I think after those picks, that's going to wrap up yeah. uh, the pod this week. Make sure you check out the merch. Oh, yeah. Link in the description of YouTube if you're not on there. Check us out on all social media platforms. We are at Ice Bath Sports on Instagram and TikTok, at Ice Bath Pod on Twitter. And you can check out the video version of this show on the Ice Bath Sports Podcast youtube page we will see you guys after christmas next tuesday as always stay stay cool. cool